my friends. Uh, today uh, I thought we'll discuss the uh, fetal skull, uh, maternal pelvis, and finally the mechanism of labor. So um, since this ten generally comes in our vivas, and it is very important to know these things to know the mechanism of labor in general, which is the very important topic about obstetric in obstetrics. So I decided to divide into three parts. So we'll be doing uh, the fetal skull today. The next discussion will be solely on the maternal pelvis, and finally, I'll decide. Uh, sorry, I'll discuss the uh, mechanism of labor. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so supposing this is uh, a fetal skull is given to you in the viva. So, how will you go about it? So, first, you should know the different parts of it. That will help you to know the different diameters on this. So, I'll be discussing fetal skull in the parts of the the sutures, the fontanelles. the different areas on the fetal skull that it is divided into and finally the different diameters okay so uh, as you can see my friends the very prominent lines are there so what are these these are the sutures so we have four sutures in the fetal skull one is the sagittal suture which is present between the two parietal bones and the other is the frontal suture which is present between the two frontal bones the coronal suture is between the frontal bone and the parietal bone and finally the lambdoid suture which is present between the occipital part occipital bone and the parietal bone so we have now seen the four sutures okay now coming to the next part that is the fontanelles now fontanelle one we have anterior fontanelle and the other we have is posterior fontanelle this very small triangular area that you can see so anterior fontanelle as seen here is a diamond shaped fontanelle which is around 3 into 2 cm it is present uh, bounded by the frontal suture the sagittal suture and the coronal sutures on the sides while the posterior fontanelle is bound by the lambdoid sutures on the sides and the sagittal suture it is nearly 1.2 into 1.2 cm and it ossifies at 6 to 8 weeks of age while this ossifies at nearly 18 months of age okay now why do we need uh, to know these fontanelles is because uh, which fontanelle you can palpate per vaginally in the baby tells you the attitude of the baby whether the baby's head is flexed or deflexed because a completely flexed head is very important for a delivery to occur smoothly if the baby's head is not completely flexed there can be problems in delivery right so if the baby's head is supposing occipital anterior so supposing the baby's head is completely flexed in occipital anterior position right so we will be able to palpate the posterior suture right so this is the posterior suture we'll be able to palpate if the baby's head is completely flexed so we'll know that it is completely flexed while if the baby's head is not flexed completely and it is partially extended we'll be able to palpate the anterior fontanelle and not the posterior fontanelle right so per vaginally you'll be able to palpate this and you'll be able to know that the baby's head is not completely flexed so this is why the fontanelles are important now what are the different regions in which the baby's head is divided first is the vertex so vertex is basically a lambdoid area right so this is a lambdoid area wherein it is bounded by i'll try to show you it is bounded by the bregma in the front the lambdoid uh, the posterior fontanelle at the back and finally the parietal eminence on both the sides so this is the quadrangular area that we see right so parietal eminences on the uh, both sides the bregma in the front and the posterior fontanelle at the back so this is the vertex by uh, the sincipit which is also called the brow is between the bregma and the coronal sutures in the superior part and the supravital ridge and root of nose in inferiorly so this will be your sincipit or the brow now the face will be below this that is the supraorbital ridge root of the nose at the top and the face uh, and the and below it will be bounded by the junction of the neck and the mouth so that will be your face while occipit will be at the back of the posterior fontanelle and so this will be the occipit right and uh, finally the glabella is at the root of the nodes right so this will be the glabella okay so uh, these are the different parts of the fetal skull that you should know okay now we come to the anterior posterior diameter so what are the different anterior posterior diameters that we should know there are six of them and four transverse diameters okay uh, so uh, the anterior posterior diameters that are uh, present depend on the attitude of the baby's head 
if the baby's head is completely flexed in the maternal uh, pelvis then it will be from the nape of neck to the center of bregma right so nape nape of neck to the center of bregma so this is the sub occipito bregmatic it is nearly 9.5 cm seen in complete flexion while if it is slightly deflexed it will be from the nape of neck that is uh, uh, the uh, nape of neck to anterior end of the bregma that is sub occipito frontal this will be 10 cm if it is mildly deflexed it will be from the occipital eminence to the glabella that is between the orbital uh, ridges so this is from the occipital eminence to the glabella this is occipito frontal and this is nearly 11.5 cm now we come to extension if it is partially extended it will be from the highest point of the sagittal suture to the from uh, to the chin that is from the point of the chin to the highest point of the sagittal suture is meant to vertical and it is 14 cm while if it is incompletely flexed it will be from the angle of neck uh, from the angle between the neck and the junction of mouth to the highest point in the sagittal suture which is 11.5 cm this is sub mento vertical while if it is completely extended it will be from the angle between the neck and chin to the center of bregma that is from till here so it will be sub mento bregmatic so this is nearly 9.5 cm you can also remember wherever the term bregmatic comes it will be 9.5 cm so i'll try to show you in the pelvis maternal pelvis see if it is completely flexed if it is completely flexed it is from the uh, nape of neck right from the nape of neck to the center of bregma to the center of bregma that is 9.5 cm sub mento bregmatic while if it is slightly deflexed it will be from the nape of neck to the to the front of the bregma front of the bregma i don't know if it is clear it will be from the to the front of the bregma that is 10 cm so 10 cm okay now it is supposing completely deflexed mark deflection so it will be from the occipital eminence to the glabella that is between the uh, that is between the orbital ridges so from the occipital eminence to the glabella is occipital frontal nearly 11.5 cm now supposing the same way we will see extension so supposing the extension is between uh, it is partially extended so it will be from the chin to the highest point on the sagittal suture right so like this so from the chin to the highest point on the sagittal suture this is known as mento vertical this is nearly 14 centimeters okay and if it is incompletely extended so it will be incompletely extended so further like this it will go so from the angle of the neck and chin to the highest point on the sagittal suture it is known as sub mento vertical nearly 11.5 centimeters so it is from the angle between neck and chin to the highest point on sagittal suture 11.5 centimeters while if it is completely extended it will be from the angle of completely extended it will be from the angle between the neck and chin to the center of bregma right so neck and chin to the center of bregma as you can see so this will be face presentation right so this is known as sub mento bregmatic from the angle between neck and chin to the center of bregma sub mento bregmatic this is 9.5 centimeters right so these are different ap diameters anterior posterior diameters six anterior posterior diameters to be correct and finally come, we come to the transverse diameters right so transverse diameters there are four transverse diameters that is from the two between the two parietal eminences bi parietal diameter so these are the parietal eminences between these two are bi parietal diameter that is the 9.5 centimeters uh, between the two temporal eminences is bi temporal that is bi temporal uh, diameter is nearly 8 centimeters if we come between the bi mastoid diameter it is nearly 7.5 centimeter and there is one supra sub parietal diameter that is if this is a parietal diameter so a point above this parietal eminence and a point below the other parietal eminence is supra sub parietal diameter which is nearly 8.5 centimeters so these were the different diameters so i hope uh, i have clarified your point between the different things that we should know about the fetal skull that is we have discussed the suture the fontanelles the different part that is the vertex the brow that is incipit the face occiput and glabella
and also the different diameters that are, that is the anterior posterior diameters and the transverse diameters so i hope uh, that was clear to you thank you uh, in the next session we will discuss the maternal pelvis bye